Hi, I'm Rachel Wall, founder of Inspired Hygiene. I want to share with you a question that I received from an audience member at the Hinman. So after the program, I offered an open coaching session to answer questions about things they had learned during the program and things they were trying to implement in their practice after the seminar. And this question came to me. She said, hi, Rachel, I'd like to know what treatment you would recommend for a patient that presents with, okay, let's look at this, patient that presents with radiographic bone loss, six millimeter pocket depths, and bleeding on probing. The reason I'm struggling, she says, is because there's no evidence of radiographic calculus. So this is really interesting, and it's not that unusual of a question. So a lot of you might be saying, well, hello, right? We've got radiographic bone loss, we have six millimeter pocket depths, and we have bleeding on probing. Obviously, there's active infection there, and that's what I would say, too. But I want to talk just a little bit about that calculus issue. So still, even from 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago when I was in hygiene school, one of the parameters at that point was radiographic bone loss. And that's still really seared in the minds of a lot of hygienists and even some dentists. And so it's important to understand that calculus does not equal periodontal disease and periodontal disease does not always equal calculus. In fact, one of the things to consider as if you have a patient that is presenting with all of these conditions, but yet there is no radiographic calculus, is that they are very likely at risk for more rapid progression of periodontal disease than someone that does have radiographic calculus, right? These people are responding, they're having an inflammatory response to a very limited amount of local irritant, right? So it could be that the biofilm contains very virulent bacteria, which obviously means it needs to be disrupted. It could be that their immune system is compromised in one way or another, or that they have a genetic indicator that causes them to have an increased, um, exaggerated response to inflammation. All of those things back up your decision to move forward with active periodontal therapy. So the question that this hygienist had was, I'm seeing all these things, I don't know how to treat this patient. And so my recommendation would be, just based on this, right, I don't know anything else about this patient, so let's just make sure that we, we understand that. Just based on what she's telling me, I think it would be appropriate to move forward with active periodontal therapy with this patient, even if she's not seeing radiographic calculus. So then the next question is, okay, well, what do I do? Well, what you'll be doing is you'll be using your ultrasonic instruments to very thoroughly disrupt that biofilm and the endotoxins that are in that periodontal pocket, and that is going to trigger that healing response and really take that bacterial level down so that the body can respond in a positive way and reduce all this inflammation. I hope this helps. Please send questions and comments. You can comment on the blog right here. We'd love to hear from you.